I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. <laughs> Agape love to you guys. Hello, beloved. We are now in chapter 15 of John. So the true vine, the and he's also called the branch of righteousness. So he, his life was righteous. He lived a righteous life. He resurrected from the dead, be quickened by the spirit because he was holy unto God and he abide, abided in God and his sayings, his words, and he kept his word and he did not sin. And my father is the husbandman. So a husbandman of a grapevine, I'm going to use as an example, um, comes in and prunes and everything. We have Napa over here near where I live and the husbandman owns the vineyard. Okay. And they, the husbandman clips and, and tends to the, the vineyard. So the true vine that bears much fruit is the Lord Jesus. And the father is the husbandman. He tends to the vine. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. So notice the in me part. So we must be in that branch, the righteous branch. That beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now there's tares amongst the branches that try to take the energy away from the branches. So God cuts the tares and binds them and casts them in the fire because they are only there to suck the energy out of the branches. And God will, he's a hus husbandman, he will cut them and burn them. Now ye are clean through the word. Right there, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. This is why the enemy, Satan, has the wolves in sheep's clothing, have taken the word and made it of none effect. And why they have taken the word and made it, made um, the churches that they've made to try to get people to not be clean by the word, through the word, um, to hear what he speaks to um, receive it and to keep his sayings because they know that would make them clean <clears throat> and then they would have no hold satan would have no hold on them but if a person really believed we have to remember that in the spirit that satan had the prince of this world has nothing in christ so if we're in him uh satan has nothing in us and if you're sealed in him you're you're good to go um, now, going off and listening to other words and abiding in other words rather than in the word of God, you know, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Which I have spoken unto you, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it bide, abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. We cannot do anything apart from Christ. So that's why it's important we abide in his word. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. There it is. If a man abideth abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and it withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye you, you, you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might be, remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I pray that all of the saints' joys, joy would be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things have uh, that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you 
that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, I had a, a man who I know was an angel. He tried to act like he was homeless and tried to act crazy, but I knew he wasn't. And one day, I just had a had this spirit. It's like I knew his spirit was joined to the Holy Spirit or he had the Holy Spirit in him, in my heart. And people, he's the kind of guy that you just walk by going, oh, that guy's crazy, you know? For some reason, he, I was drawn to him. And... God says that he brings you to still waters, people who are resting in God and his spirit. And I'm giving the gospel on the street and everything. And he comes, you know, he and I are talking. And the next thing you know, he like looks at me and he says this whole chapter to me. And at the end, he goes, and your fruit will remain. And I just was like, I knew the scripture that he was talking about. And I went, I just about was amazed and I, I couldn't believe that he was saying this to me, that my fruit would remain, that the fruit that, that I was giving the gospel and those people, fruit from the dead, that they would remain. And it just, it blessed me beyond imagination. And I haven't seen him for a while. I know. I think he's an angel. <laughs> I really do. See, God said that you might entertain an angel unaware. So praise the Lord. Okay, these things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. And that's true. The world does love his own, the, its own. And they, those of the world, they have peace in this world. We don't have peace because like Jesus and the apostles and the prophets and all the people of God, Noah, he did not have peace with the people because the people were wicked. And so we too, because there's enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. So we are of the seed of the woman, uh, Jerusalem above, mother of us all. Okay. So if you're of that seed, that's a heavenly Jerusalem. <laughs> that is the word of God in them. And we are going to be hated by the world because the world speaks a different language, totally different. I've had people, even my own, uh, uh, my own family member say to me when I was speaking to a sister in Christ and we're talking about the word of God afterwards, they said, you guys sound like you're talking some foreign language because <laughs> they can't understand the word of God. I pray that they get understanding because time is short. If you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. The world, therefore, um, world, the world hateth you. Remember the word that said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they un un do unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me. When you understand, Jesus said, you know, they hate, it's not me that they hate, it's he that sent me that they hate. So if you understand when people are attacking you or mocking you, because I've had it happen to me many times, it's not me that they hate. It's the word that's in me. It's the Lord. And many of my brothers and sisters experience the same thing. Now, if someone someone's heart's prepared by God um, before you speak, See, sometimes it's just a testimony that you you were given the word, you had a visitation from God, and you're rejecting the word. God needs a testimony. It says they reject the word. They don't want the word. It's a testimony, a witness in their blood, in their water, and in the um, their spirit is testifying that they don't believe God, his word. And so that will be played back to them at the judgment of Christ, and they will understand and they will be their own testimony against themselves. So really, the word that he speaks, that's where he says in that last video where I talked about how the word will judge them at the last day. It will be played back to them. and They'll hear the word and they'll go, oh, I rejected that. I remember. I remember spitting on that girl. 
when she talked the word to me. Oh my gosh, I rejected the word of God. Um, and that is when, um, you know, God will weigh them in the balances, you know, if they decide to believe because they see, you know, I don't know, he's the judge to let you in the door or say, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness, you know, and then there's those who receive the word. And that's why you have to read the parable of the, the seed, the sower of the seed and the seed and the ground and know that the enemy comes to still kill and destroy that word that is spoken to somebody. And maybe someone received the word, but then they went out and they didn't keep the sayings of the word or they didn't remain in the doctrines of Christ and his word. And so their joy is not full and they're out there with the world. They're part of the world and they understand the world more than God and they're a divided person. You don't want to be a divided person. We can be in the world, but not of the world. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're not from this place. We're from a heavenly Jerusalem. We're from an eternal kingdom with Christ. And so because of that, we're hated because a lot of times what God says through us will bring down much of their merchandise, much of their kingdom. And that's God doing it, not me, you know. <laughs> so when they hate you, when maybe you're bringing down some sorcerer and their merchandise like Jesus did, not or the apostles did not purposefully not trying to take down their merchandise but speaking the word of truth they leave the desiring of the merchandise i'll give you an example in if the ephesian book of ephesians i think they were selling uh doves which we see today the selling in the churches you know the pope sells all these trinkets and things that people keep in their pockets they buy all these things and they think that they're somehow saving them but they're not they're just idols in their pockets and I know someone who pulled out all these idols he was a Catholic pulled out like all these little things oh look at it. this is this is gonna do this this is gonna do that I'm just going I looked at him I go I'm sorry but the word of God says that you know those things can't speak or hear and they're not going to save you the guy was like taken aback and he grabbed him kind of angrily and put him in his pocket but you could see that the word of God had spoken to him I go, the spirit giveth life, not those trinkets, not those. He had like a cross and a dove and he had like all these different things in his pockets. This is the same thing as when Jesus walked the earth and when the apostles walked and talked to the Ephesians, they were in confusion. This man was in confusion, uh, like Babylon. Babylon is confusion. And so he was sold these things and they get rich off these things. When the spirit of truth comes and speaks to them, it's like, I'm not trying to get rid of this merchandise selling, but by speaking the truth, they stop buying the merchandise. And then the people selling the merchandise who are getting rich, get mad. And then they go after the apostles or me or whoever, you know, is bringing down their, merchandise their sorcery because it's sorcery according to the, the book of revelation jesus of jesus christ he talks about it and so that's how that whole system gets brought down the babylonian system so um i had not come and spoken unto them that they had not had sin but now they have no cloak for their sin so if that guy continues to worship those idols that he had in his pockets uh, God had spoken to him and said, you know, those aren't anything. There's nothing in those, those trinkets that you have in your pocket. Um, he, now he has no cloak for his sin. Now he knows by the spirit of truth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And hopefully he turns from those things. He that hateth me hateth my father also. And remember the father, it was his word that he's speaking. The father spoke and the word created things. So he's a life giver. And if you follow after death and not the word of God, you know, he says, stay in the light. Why, I, why I'm with you, I'm the light. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, 
which proceedeth from the Father. He shall testify of me, praise the Lord. See, the Father testifies of the Son. He says, believe in him. When he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Father um, came as a, in the cloud and spoke, and he said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And the father had Moses and I think Elijah or someone standing next to him and the father uh, next to Jesus. And the father said, this is my son, hear him. He shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. So we bear witness of the son and of the father. Praise his name. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues yea the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth god's service and these things will will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me but because remember if you know lord jesus you know the father but these things have i told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that i told you of of them and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my, my way. Now, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither thou goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the, I think it says truth. Yep. I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. That part's real important. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. We overcome the world by the blood of the Lamb and the blood of Christ is for the remission of our sins of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. So he was the righteous one, the Lord Jesus of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when the son of, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will glorify me. So the spirit of truth glorifies the Lord. The comforter glorifies the Lord. There's no getting rid of the Lord, the son of man, the son of God. If they do, that is, that is totally opposite of what the word of God says. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, the Lord is the Lord in heaven. He's the head of the church. We are the body on earth. Okay, so just like Jesus, the son of man, we are in the, that son of man. We are in him and he is glorified in us. Uh, not We don't have the light yet. We're, we have not been given that, but it is sealed. We are sealed in him who is glorified. Jesus shined brighter than the sun. Whenever Saul saw him before he became Paul. And um, so he was already had the glory of the father in him. It, he was so bright that everyone around him couldn't see. That's how bright he was. So um, that's why in the book of Revelation, he destroys the wicked with the brightness of his coming. So that's what we have, have to look forward to when the son of man, son of God comes. Praise his holy name. The Lord in heaven, the last Adam, a quickening spirit. Praise his name. So everything has glory, it says in the book of um, 1 Corinthians 15. At the end of it, it talks about the different, different glories. So not everything is the same and not everything gets the same glory <laughs> according to the scriptures. <laughs> For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto me and to you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Do ye, oh wait, a little while. Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, a little while, and ye shall see, not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. This is just like the book of Revelation right here. A woman, when she hath is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth not no, no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So similar to a baby being born, he's showing the similarity of a delivering of a child. It's painful. I know I've had a child. It's painful. But once a child is born, there's joy because you have this child. And it's beautiful. In the same way, a born again Christian is born into the kingdom by the spirit. And that's a wonderful thing. But also in the same way, when you're delivered into the kingdom, into and into the new Jerusalem, into the heavenly Jerusalem, um, we when we put off this our tabernacle, it's painful. So the apostles had pain during their deliverance into the nation, which is New Jerusalem above, you know, in the, uh, Jerusalem above. They were part of New Jerusalem here in earth as born again. But when they had to put off their tabernacle, it was like, you know, being delivered of a child. Dying for a Christian is, is painful. There's, you can't get around that. It's painful. It's sorrowful. The, Stephen was being stoned by, by the priest. And as he was being stoned, he looked up and he saw the Lord in heaven coming into him. Coming to him to bring him into the kingdom. So it was painful for him, but he was born into the kingdom. Even though he was born again already, it was painful for him to go into the kingdom and leave this place. Because remember, we're ambassadors. This is not our home. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejo rejoice. And your joy, no man. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, honey. Your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. So that we're not going to have any questions when we see him. It's going to be, you know, all the answers. Because the word of God is settled in heaven, it says. So we know in heaven, um, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, we will have no questions when we see him face to face. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask me, ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Wait, wait. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that the, I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. This part I want everybody to really focus on. I came out from God. He came out of union from God, the Lord Jesus did. This is what he showed me, and I'm just sharing you my, with you my talent about this. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me praise the lord hallelujah these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace he's the prince of peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world praise the lord so we're going to stop this one and go on to the last chapter for today that i'm going to read and agape love to you